everyone, welcome to today's pet podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Roberta Westbrook, and you're here with us at the Campus for All Animals, the Houston SPCA. We have an exciting show for you today. It's almost the 4th of July, and we want to make sure that you have a really wonderful, fun, happy, and safe holiday for both you and your family pets. So if you have questions about keeping your pet safe and happy this holiday season, please don't hesitate to put those questions in the chat. In the meantime, Let's introduce you to our pet of the week this week. Week is Ron. Ron is a one to two year old neutered male, and he has a special story. Ron came to us through our animal cruelty and investigations department. Ron was living in a essentially a hoarding situation where there were too many animals and not enough resources to care for them. Uh, and Ron has been with us now for almost 70 full days looking for his family. And so we encourage you to come on down and meet Ron. Ron is gentle. He is calm and he's a little bit shy, but he warms up quickly. He needs a family who's going to be willing to work with him, love him, let him be a couch potato <laughs> or be active um, as much as he wants to. So please come on down and meet Ron and all the other animals that we have available for adoption in our adoption center every day from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we want to talk to you about the 4th of July and some of the precautions that we hope that you can take this holiday to keep your pets safe. So a couple of things about the 4th of July. The main thing that we're excited about is going out to enjoy the festivities. It's very common that maybe your neighborhood or your city downtown has some activities. And it's always a great time for the family to go down and enjoy those activities. You may be wondering whether or not it's a good idea to take your pet to some of these outdoor activities. I would recommend that it's not a good idea to take your pet to some of these outdoor activities. One of the main reasons is that the 4th of July is the most uh, common holiday where pets become lost. And that's because there's so much activity, there's so many new people, there's so much noise, and pets oftentimes become stressed and sometimes run away as a result of that stress and they leave home. And so we encourage you not to bring your pets out to those events. We want it to be fun, but it may be best to keep your pet safe indoors uh, where they're not likely to get away from you. Even pets who love uh, you know, being around people and tend to be social, and maybe you've noticed that they're not afraid of, of loud noises in general, sometimes just the overwhelming uh, number of people and the sounds from the fireworks can actually trigger something that you haven't seen before. So I would still recommend that you keep your pets at home during the 4th of July and maybe enjoy something in your home, in your backyard, invite family and friends over uh, if that's an alternative for you. All right, if we're unable to stay home with them, should we be concerned of them getting hurt in the crate by them freaking out because of the fireworks? Or what can we do about keeping them safe when we're not home with them? That's a great question. If you're going to leave your pet at home while you're out enjoying some of those activities, make sure the crate that you're keeping your pet in is secure. So make sure the door closes, that all of the, the bolts and screws that keep the crate together are intact. Then what you can do to try to help keep your pet calm is make sure the environment is calm. calm. You can put your television set on. There are lots of programs on YouTube um, and, and TV channels that show pet friendly programs and have pet friendly sounds. Those sounds can actually help to drown out the background noise of the fireworks and they may distract your pets just enough to keep them calm. Make sure that in the crate that they have water available and that they have a, a toy per that you are used to them playing with so that they're not uh, ingesting, uh, you know, a dangerous toy while you're not home. So food, water, a nice toy, and maybe a comfortable blanket or bed for them to lie down on. Um, and if you like to put that crate inside of a laundry room or a bedroom just to give extra protection, those are some other alternative options. Are there any medications we can give our pets to help ease their anxiety? Yes, there are multiple medications that may help your pet's anxiety on the 4th of July. Please see your family veterinarian for a list of these medications and to help your uh, pet find the right one for them. Now, you may need to plan for this early, so make sure that you call your veterinarian as soon as 
possible where you're getting closer to the holiday and you want to make sure that your pet can be seen and that the medication can be prescribed. And then if there is, if the medication doesn't work, that we have time to maybe try an alternative option. And we've heard of the, the undershirts before. How do they work and do they work? <laughs> So in addition to medications that your pet can take, sometimes there are non-medicated options. One of those is wearing a, like a Thunder shirt. A, if you've not heard of a Thunder shirt, a Thunder shirt is a product um, that, a commercial product that you can get at your local pet store. And it's essentially equivalent to swaddling a baby, for example. Uh, you know, swaddling a baby and wrapping them in a nice soft blanket can actually provide some comfort, kind of like a nice firm hug. Well, Thunder shirts and similar products work in that way. And so you may consider uh, purchasing a Thunder shirt, going to your local pet store, or looking online for those options that may be uh, an option for you. If you cannot purchase a Thunder shirt, again, you can mimic that by taking a, a blanket or a t shirt and wrapping your pet in that blanket or t shirt, uh, not too tight, but just tight enough that they feel like a nice hug. If it's the first time that you're doing this, I recommend staying home with them uh, and watching and making sure that whatever blanket <laughs> or um, cloth that you've used doesn't become tangled and that they don't become more panicked by that. Does comforting them, you know, if we're trying to like baby talk them, does that reward that behavior? That's kind of like a myth that we've kind of heard around. Sure, you wanna make sure that your pets are comfortable around you. And so if they, if you're noticing that they are becoming nervous and are wanting to be close to you, go ahead and allow that. You can allow your pet to, you know, sit on the couch with you, sit on the chair with you, maybe even get in the bed with you and playing comforting music and, and petting them and speaking calmly. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And so you wanna make sure that they are just provided with a nice comforting uh, environment during that difficult time. Other things that you can do in your environment are considering putting, um, you know, scents in the environment that have calming effects as well. Scents like lavender and chamomile, these can be calming scents for your pet. Don't let them ingest any of these uh, plugins that you have in your home or potpourri or anything like that, but just have, having those scents in the air can certainly help to calm them down uh, during those moments. And if they're too terrified to eat or enjoy any treats, should we be worried about them not having an appetite or is there a window we should look out for? You know, that's okay. It's okay if your pets don't eat while, while they're nervous. That's a very, very common uh, thing. And that's because, you know, part of their, their fight or flight system that we call it is telling them, hey, I need to be on the lookout. I'm hearing loud noises. Now's not the time to relax and eat. That's perfectly normal. Don't worry. Once the fireworks are over and the noises are over, after a day or so, they should go back to their normal routine. Now, if you're noticing two or three days later that they're still not eating, they're still very nervous, please contact your veterinarian. Also, make sure that they're drinking some water and getting some fluids. Dehydration can also be a pretty serious condition. So just make sure that after a day or so, they should go back to their normal eating routine, but don't worry too much if they're not eating the night of the festivities. And we usually think of, you know, dogs being scared. Do cats react the same way? Should we kind of be worried about them too? Sure, cats can also have fear of loud noises and fireworks. You may notice that your cat is hiding under the bed or, you know, trying to find a nice quiet place to sort of escape the noise. Uh, and, and the same thing, you wanna give them that opportunity to get away from the loud noises. If that means putting them in a, in a bedroom or, you know, in a bathroom, playing some calm, comforting music, classical music to drown out the background noise. That's perfectly normal and okay to do that. Uh, make sure that they also have a nice, comfortable bed uh, and those creature comforts that they tend to enjoy even without the loud noises. And you, we mentioned, uh, you know, every year how 4th, 4th of July is the biggest, one of the biggest holidays where dogs get lost and in a way, what are some tips to prevent them from getting lost or what should we have in place um, in case that happens? Great question. The tip, the main thing that we want to do is to prevent your pet from being lost. And so again, that means considering staying home with them, or if you're not going to stay home with them, get a nice solid crate that they can be confined in during that time. Um, and then talking to your veterinarian about calming agents if you know that your pet tends to suffer from anxiety. Now, what you can do to uh, prevent your pet from getting lost permanently are things like making sure that they have some permanent identification. So permanent identification includes a microchip. So a microchip is a tiny little uh, piece of equipment 
that is implanted or injected into the skin of your pet, you know, just on the back of the neck between the shoulder blades, um, this small microchip can be traced. Now it's not a tracker. The microchip does not track your pet wherever he or she goes throughout the neighborhood or the city if they get lost. What it does is it allows your pet to be reconnected with you once they are found and taken to either a veterinary hospital or a clinic or an animal shelter. We as veterinary professionals can take a scanner. We scan your pet that picks up the microchip number the microchip number can then be put in a website online and that website is connected to your personal information like your phone number and your address. So this is the way that microchips can help you reconnect with your pet once they're lost. And so ways that you can, again, make sure that you get reconnected with your pet as soon as possible is one prevention by just keeping them safe, keeping them at home, staying with them, keeping them calm but two, making sure that you have avenues in place to reconnect with them if they get lost. And that includes a microchip or a collar that has both the pet's name, your name and phone number and address so that they can reconnect you together as soon as possible. A lot of people might ask, you know, they already have a collar. Why do I still need a microchip? You know, when pets get scared and they run away, you know, it's not uncommon that dogs that are very nervous can even jump through windows. They can jump through windows or glass doors or sometimes off balconies. When these extreme measures are taken to escape, those collars sometimes come off. They come off, they get loose, they get caught on something. And now if they're left on the ground or they're not attached to the pet, they're not gonna be useful. So it's better to have something permanent like a microchip that can be inserted into your pet. Um, and that way, if they get lost and they wind up in a veterinary clinic or a hospital or an animal shelter, we have a way to get them back to you as soon as possible. And how do we know if a pet has a microchip? You know, it's under the skin, so we can't see it. So what if we rescued it or we found them on the streets? How, how do we know they have a microchip? Yes, I encourage everyone, if you find a pet, always take that pet, uh, what you think is a lost pet, always take the pet to a local shelter or veterinary hospital. We all have what are called universal microchip scanners. A universal microchip scanner is an instrument that we can use to scan your pet. It looks like a wand and it, we scan your pet and by scanning your pet, we can pick up the microchip number. And as I mentioned before, then that microchip number can be traced back to your uh, personal information. And so uh, it's, it's always a, a great idea that if you think that there is a lost pet, always take them to the veterinary hospital to get scanned. There's really no way to know externally whether the pet is microchipped um, until you take them to get them scanned. And I think it's important to note too, like the personal information doesn't live on this website that and just because your pet has a microchip, we can all look up your phone number. Oh yes, it, exactly. I do want to be clear that um, once that microchip number is put into a website, usually you have to call the company and the company will have to be able to release that information. Um, they won't release your personal information to people. They will contact you as the owner and say, your pet has been found and they will work out a way for you to connect with the person who has found your pet. So don't worry, your personal information will not be out uh, available to the public, but rather the company will notify you that someone has uh, found your pet and give you guys ways to connect to each other in a safe and secure way. So um, it's still a wonderful way to keep your pet safe during these times where it's very common that they're gonna get out and get lost. And that guess brings another point, if your pet has a microchip, make sure it's registered and up to date. Absolutely, so you always wanna make sure that your microchip information is registered and up to date. If you're not sure if your pet has a microchip, maybe you found this pet, you know, maybe you got this pet from a friend or a family member and you're not sure, take your pet to a veterinary clinic or a hospital and ask them to check. And if they do find a microchip and you didn't know, they can give you the number to the company. You can call the company and the company is going to be able to update that information and make sure that that, that information is current. Um, and then, so what if, you know, the worst happens and the pet gets lost, any tips on to helping them find them? You know, the pet, we, uh, the chip is done, we have the collar, what else can we do to help reunite them, you know, worst case scenario? 
Yes. Well, you if you've done all of that, you're really ahead of the game. And that's that's really you're off to a great start to finding your pet. The next thing you can do is begin to notify local veterinary hospitals, grooming facilities and area shelters. So get on the phone the next day, notify these places that you have lost your pet. Give them your name, your phone number, and a description of your pet. If you have photos, it's a good idea to keep some recent photos of your pet that are clear in image, um, that have good lighting. You can give those photos to local clinics and to uh, animal shelters, and they can be on the lookout for if your pet arrives in their facility. The next thing you can do is consider making a flyer. So if your pet is lost, use those good images, make a flyer that has the pet's name, contact information for you, and you can post those in your in your neighborhood. There's also lots of neighborhood apps. So there's neighborhood chat groups and Facebook groups that you can get on. You can let your neighborhood uh, and neighborhood uh, and neighbors know right away if you've lost your pet, they'll be on the lookout and they can contact you during those times where your pet may be lost. Don't hesitate to go online look up uh, websites for lost pets. You can come to the HoustonSPCA.org. We have a page for lost pets. You can check us. You can also check other area shelters like the city of Houston uh, who also have lost pet websites. So make sure you're online, use online resources, make a lost pet report at these local area shelters, make phone calls to veterinary hospitals and clinics and shelters, and then make flyers if you need to but you want everybody on the game for helping you to find your pet. And then what do we do if we find a dog that seems to be lost and doesn't have a microchip? Yes, if you have a, if you found a pet, maybe you did take that pet to a veterinary hospital or clinic or shelter and the pet does not have a microchip, you can also um, let people know I have a found pet and we can help to look for that pet's owners by keeping that report, that found report. If someone calls us and says, you know, hey, I lost my pet. If we don't have it in the shelter, but maybe we know someone who does, we may be able to create a connection between you two so that you can reunite the pet with the original owner. Uh, make a loss report with the city. They will do the same thing. They'll keep a, uh, you know, they keep a report of all the found pets. And then you can also, make flyers that say, hey, I found this pet, take a picture. I found this pet, post those flyers up, let veterinary clinics and hospitals know that you found a pet. That way, if you're letting them know that you found a pet and the owner is letting those places know that they've lost a pet, eventually you guys can connect. And then 4th of July also means, you know, having uh, people around with barbecue, any tips that we should think about um, during those parties? <laughs> yeah. So aside from your pet getting lost, the other hazards of holidays, including the 4th of July, is all of the delicious food that we will be eating that we love to share with our pets, but we probably should not do it. And that's because our pets cannot eat the same foods that we can safely. All of the high fatty foods and starchy foods and greasy foods, those can cause severe gastrointestinal upset, including vomiting and diarrhea for our pets. And then in some worst case scenarios, we're even looking at diseases like pancreatitis, where there's inflammation of the pancreas, which can in some cases can be life threatening. So please do not include your pet in some of those uh, delicious meals that you're eating. Consider just giving them uh, dog food dog food that is maybe moist or canned, maybe a little bit of a treat. Um, you can also offer them uh, vegetables like green beans and carrots and other healthy things that we eat, but that are also safe for our pets to eat and don't contain too much grease. And of course, I'm sure it's going to be another hot weekend here in Houston. <laughs> Absolutely. Another risk here in Houston uh, and in the southern states right now, it's very hot. And so when you're outside enjoying those festivities, remember to keep your pets cool. You always want to make sure that you have a water source for your pet and that you have a way to keep your pet cool, getting into the shade, having a fan, or being able to get back to an air-conditioned building or car pretty quickly. It's always a fun time to play outdoors and let your, your pets run around and play fetch. But remember when the temperatures reach 100 and they're over 100 uh, this week, your pets are going to become overheated quicker than they would have a few months ago. So make sure that you're taking very frequent breaks and that you're making sure uh, that during those frequent breaks that your pets are having access to water and shade. So there's lots going on this holiday. We want you to have a safe, wonderful time with your pets out enjoying the festivities, but just make sure that you're staying safe, keep your pets 
uh, vaccinations up to date, keep your pet's microchip information up to date, get them a collar. If you can stay indoors with them, go ahead and stay indoors with them, but contact your veterinarian if you need assistance with medication or other ways to keep your pet calm during the 4th of July. Well, we will be with you again next week with another exciting topic, but consider coming on down and enjoying uh, a day with us this weekend at our adoption center and looking at all the pets that we have available for adoption and consider taking a pet home to join your family. We thank you for joining us every week at the Pet Podcast and we will see you next week. Happy 4th.